2020, the year we won't forget. The year we can't forget, no matter how hard we try. It's the year that'll linger long into 2021, like that Adobe Creative Cloud subscription payment that keeps showing up in your bank statement. 2020 spared no one, myself included. In my first video of the year, I decided to play it safe by making a single prediction. One thing I have been told, however, is that the next plan release is going to be GIMP 2.10.16, Naturally, with GIMP 2.10.14 being the last stable release of 2019, the safest prediction one can make for the following year is that the next version of GIMP would be GIMP 2.10.16. But in true 2020 fashion, GIMP 2.10.16 had a critical bug that left developers with essentially no choice but to skip that version and go straight to GIMP 2.10.18. So my one safe prediction for the year was wrong. However, as horrible as the year was, there still was some good to come from it, including some great work from the GIMP community. But of course, before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member, and you can read any of my free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And as I mentioned, you can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Like the year before, 2020 saw three new GIMP release versions, including GIMP 2.10.18, GIMP 2.10.20, and GIMP 2.10.22. With these new versions came some great features. For example, GIMP 2.10.18 saw important UI improvements made to the GIMP toolbox, including the reordering of tools based on how commonly they are used, introduction of tool groups for organizing tools into similar categories, and the option for a single column toolbox layout for a less cluttered GIMP window. This release also rolled out the brand new 3D Transform tool, better performance when transforming larger images, new tool slider styling and key modifiers, and improved brush performance. The next release, GIMP 2.10.20, introduced some great new features including non-destructive cropping, additional improvements made to the group tools feature, including more intuitive mouse behavior when hovering over a tool group, and on-screen editing for the vignette filter, allowing users to tweak various aspects of a vignette directly on the image they're working on. This version debuted new blur filters like the lens, focus, and variable blur filters, all of which are Geggle filters and therefore have live on-canvas previewing, and the new Bloom filter for easily creating that soft, dreamy look in images, among other uses. Lastly, GIMP 2.10.20 came with performance improvements made to Geggle filter previews, and the new ability to easily and precisely stroke text via the drop shadow filter. Finally, GIMP 2.10.22, which is known as the file formats release, came with plenty of great features, though most of them are more technical in nature. In this new version, you'll find new support for HEAF files, HEAF standing for High Efficiency Image File Format, AVIF files, which can support HDR functionality, and PSP files, which is PaintShop Pro's native file format most similar to GIMPS.XCF file format. The file formats release also improved multi-layer TIFF file support, introduced sample merge for Geggle filters that use the color picker tool, which allows you to pick colors from all visible layers in the composition and not just the active layer, and a major bug fix for the popular foreground select tool. Mac users were stuck on GIMP 2.10.14 for pretty much all of 2020 due to a lack of Mac development support throughout the year, However, the GIMP team did finally release a Mac installer for GIMP 2.10.22 on December 24th, bringing all the new features I just mentioned to Mac OS for the first time all year. The GIMP community also made progress towards GIMP 3.0 with two development release versions hitting the development downloads page in 2020, including GIMP 2.99.2 and GIMP 2.99.4. I highlighted the new features found in GIMP 2.99.2 in my GIMP 3.0 First Look livestream video. Some of these features include a brand new user interface, new hot plug device support for instant recognition of peripheral devices like drawing tablets, multi-layer selection, a long-awaited and much-needed feature for the Layers panel, and the framework for the exciting new extensions management feature. 
GIMP 2.99.4, the most recent unstable development version at the time of this video, rolled out with some more bug fixes and API updates. For example, corrections were made to some conflicting actions that occurred when using key modifiers to select multiple layers. But by far the most exciting new feature announced in GIMP 2.99.4 is the brand new Paint Select tool, a game-changing smart selection feature not unlike Affinity Photo's Selection Brush tool or Photoshop's Quick Selection tool. This new Paint Select tool, though still in its beginning stages of development, will make it easy to select objects in photos by simply painting them with a traditional brush head. Of course, instead of painting a color, you're painting a selection. This tool should help significantly beef up GIMP's offering of smart selection tools, thus keeping the free software competitive with premium offerings. Now it's time to make my predictions for GIMP in 2021, mostly so all of us can go back and watch this video in a year and marvel at how wrong I was once again. I'll start by noting that in last year's video, I predicted GIMP 3.0 would be released between September and November of 2020. And the year before that, I expressed hopes of GIMP 3.0 being released sometime in 2019. Well, here we are in 2021, and there's still no GIMP 3.0. I will admit that my previous predictions about the timeline for a GIMP 3.0 release were a bit naive. After all, it took eight years to go from GIMP 2.8 to 2.10, and GIMP 2.10 just came out in spring of 2018. Allow me this time around to make a more educated guess as to when we'll finally get our hands on the elusive GIMP 3.0. Well, a major GIMP contributor noted on one of GIMP's issue boards that GIMP 3.0 is not set to be released soon, not even sure in 2021, and also noted that many developers took a 2020 apocalypse pause from contributing to the GIMP project. Let's take a quick look at a graph of developer commits over the past five years. You can see 2020 had a steady level of commits throughout the year, though its high point of total developer commits was lower than all the high points in the previous four years. In years past, GIMP benefited from occasional boosts in productivity, whereas this year's productivity mostly flatlined. And to be fair, productivity around the world flatlined thanks to the pandemic, so I don't really fault GIMP developers for losing motivation this year. So with this in mind, I predict GIMP 3.0 won't see the light of day until 2022 at the earliest, barring a major uptick in developer commits and developer funding. But while we wait for GIMP 3.0, we should continue to see new GIMP 2.10.x versions and GIMP 2.99.x development release versions. I will add that if the pandemic gets under control and life returns to some semblance of normalcy, we could very well see the uptick in productivity the GIMP project needs to tackle some of the major GIMP 3.0 roadblocks and get this version out sooner than anticipated. We're not going to get our hopes up though for 2021. We all remember what happened last time we did that. Remember, it took eight years to go from GIMP 2.8 to GIMP 2.10. If GIMP 3.0 came out in spring 2022, that would be a four year gap between major releases or about half the time between previous major releases. If this did indeed end up being the timeline for GIMP 3.0, it would mean we could realistically expect GIMP 3.2 sometime around spring 2024. Some additional features in the works that aren't currently tied to any particular GIMP version include improved animation features, script recording and playback, which I assume would be the equivalent to Photoshop Actions or Affinity Photo Macros, smart objects, which are called linked layers in GIMP, high-end CMYK support, improved text features for the currently finicky text box, a shape tool, and vector layers. I honestly don't know what version any of these features will show up in eventually, but it does appear that some of these features are further along in development than others. For example, I've seen screenshots of a test version of linked layers, which is GIMP's version of smart objects from the Zamarmit team, which you can learn more about in my article on the subject. On the other hand, improved animation features and high-end CMYK support are both listed with statuses of work in progress, meaning work has begun on these features, though I'm not entirely sure how far along these these projects currently are. There is a possibility we could see one or more of any of the new features I discussed in this video in a GIMP 2.10.x release version, though it's more likely that most of these features won't be around until at least GIMP 3.0. There also doesn't appear to be any change in the timeline for the introduction of filter and adjustment layers, so we can still anticipate these showing up in GIMP 3.2. Finally, moving on to the growth of my channel over the past year, Davies Media Design saw over 4 million new views and 40,000 new subscribers to the channel. 
I can't thank you all enough for the support you've given me over the years and the support you've given the channel by watching the tutorials. But of course, I'll be continuing to put out new tutorials, so definitely check that out throughout 2021. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ugh. <sighs> F*** you, 2020.